Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd look, like to look at a gravitation problem uh, where I have a five kilogram object in the proximity of two other identical objects. There's an S there. Um, one will be three meters away from the other one, from it. Right here, one, two, three. Three meters. And the other will be um, four meters away from it. Four meters. And these, they, they're all identical, they're all five kilograms, and I want to figure out what the um, angle of the force is here. Um, and I think from the long axis is probably good. So we'll use that. Um, so what do I know about all this? That makes a good representation, ID. Well, I know I've got three identical spheres. So given three spheres, each of mass um, m equals five kilograms. All right. Uh, let's see. Then we have our vertical displacement. I'm going to call that. Uh, dy, how about that? Uh, that's three meters. And then I have my horizontal displacement. Uh, dx is equal to four meters. Nobody's ever figured out why horizontal becomes horas, but it has. So remember that. All right, and I want to find the angle of the force. And I just called that theta here. All right. Mm. So what should I use as a concept? Well, this is a gravitation problem, I said. So my concept will be um, universal gravitation. And that has the equation uh, F is equal to GMM over R squared R. So this is the direction of um, the radial, radius vector. Uh, this is the distance here. So what do I have to do to do this? Well, uh, basically, I have two forces, so I have to use superposition uh, with those forces. So I have to find both forces. Right. So my force in the um, y direction there is equal to g m m. Oh well, both m's are the same. Excellent. So I can just put a square there. And then down here I have dy squared, and that's all in the j direction. It's moving upwards this way. And for the x, we have exactly the same sort of deal, gm squared, dx squared in the i hat direction. All right. uh, the next thing we want to do is superimpose. So that means that the total force is equal to the force in the x direction plus the force in the y direction. Um, we could do this even if these were mixed. I mean, it, it's just vector addition. It just happens to be a nice problem where we know what's going on in the y direction, we know what's going on in the x direction. It could be a less, less nice problem where we have lots of different um, strange things going on in the different directions. But it's not. It's a nice problem. So let's just live with that and be happy. All right. All right. So that's gm squared dx squared in the i hat direction plus gm squared dy squared in the j hat direction, which is equal to gm um, i hat over dx squared plus j hat over dy squared. All right, 
Uh, but we want to find the angle. That's very nice because that means I don't have to worry about this G or this M. That That's all nothing to me, right? Um, all I really care about are these um, numbers, the dy, the dx, what's going on there, right? Um, so, how do I want to deal with that? Well, I think I will um, find the angle using the tangent. Right? So you remember that um, tangent theta is equal to uh, y over x, right? So that's this y bit over this x bit. Um, so if I were to just take these two parts, I'll cancel those out. So let me say theta is equal to the arc tangent of y over x. y is 1 over dy squared, so we'll put dy squared in the bottom. We'll have dx squared up here. Um, I guess at this point, it's be the best thing to do is just throw these numbers in. Um, x squared is, dx squared is 16 square meters. dy squared is 9 square meters. Um, so that's going to be arctangent of 16 ninths, which I don't know off the top of my head. And that seems to be, um, 0 0.336 pi. We'll go with 0 0.337 after looking at the next number. Um, so that's that's a number, some some amount of pi. Uh, let's see, check. So the question is, is is that reasonable? Well, I guess this is in radians. So the answer is in radians. As an angle should be. So that's a pretty good that's a pretty good sign. We're on our way. Uh, what else are we looking at here? Um, well, if if we have our um, y equals x line here, right, that means this is 45 degrees, which is pi over 4, which is equal to 0 0.25 pi, right? Um, we want this to, this force, this resultant force, to be closer to, the, to this line than to this line, which means it should be greater than 0 0.25. So... Uh, theta should be greater than 0 0.25 pi to be closer to the y axis than the x. And um, it turns out that 0 0.337 is um, greater than 0 0.25, so it's pointing in the right direction. Oh, excuse me. I just wrote all that down and you didn't get to see. I, I know you're sad and you're crying because you didn't get to see me write that. Um, so because of that, uh, that seems to be a reasonable um, answer as well. So I'm going to go with that because it looks good to me. And, um, you know, I'll see you in class.